Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. We've got loads this week. New bike computers, new aero handlebars for your bike. They're proper cool. Some fancy new bits uh, from Physique, your upgrades, the Bike Vault, and our main talking point this week, which is should your next bike be a gravel bike or a road bike? Let's do it. This week, our main talking point is should your next bike be a gravel bike or a road bike, or perhaps it could be your first bike, uh, depending on who's watching. And the reason why we decided to discuss this is for a number of reasons. Firstly, up until a couple of years ago, this wasn't really a consideration you had to make as gravel bikes weren't really that popular. But now every single major brand has a gravel bike in their range. And so consequently, it's something people are thinking about. Also, one of the silver linings to the coronavirus shaped cloud has been that lots of people have been rediscovering cycling or perhaps just getting into it uh, for the first time. Consequently, there's a lot of people out there looking to buy a bike. The more people getting into cycling, the better. It just makes the world a better place and uh, something that you know we're really passionate about. It's great to see. But in terms of which type of bike is best for you? Well, there's, there's no one size fits all, is there? So we're gonna debate the relative pros and cons of both kinds of bikes, and then you can uh, decide which applies best to you. Also get involved in the comments section yourselves, but we're gonna begin by having a poll. Um, I love having these polls in the app because it helps us learn a lot about what you guys think, and then hopefully we can use that to tailor content and make content that's more relevant uh, to you guys uh, in the future. So we're gonna have a poll, which is quite simple. Um, what would your next bike purchase be? Would it be a gravel bike, a road bike, or another kind of bike? And uh, yeah, simply click on screen, you can vote in the poll, and I'll reveal the answers to that next week. First up then, reasons to buy a dedicated road bike. Well, dedicated road bikes, they're generally faster, lighter, more aerodynamic, often have bigger gears on them, better for you know higher speed and things like that on smooth surfaces than a dedicated gravel bike. And often the, just the lines of them are, are just a bit smoother because they don't have mounting points on the frame to you know festoon all manner of gadgetry and you know bags and accessories when you're going on adventures. Personally, I'm a big fan of, of just kind of the smooth lines and clean look of a road bike versus a gravel bike, um, although I do like both. But if you're gonna be planning on riding, you know, mainly on the road, and you want to do things like Grand Fondos, Sportives, maybe even dip your toe in and have a go at racing, and you know, you want to be as fast as possible in those vents, then a road bike is the way to go. It's gonna be the faster bike. Uh, odds on. The other thing to consider is maybe you just want to ride with your friends but again you're a bit competitive or you want to ride as quick as you can and get PBs on climbs and things like that. If that's you then road bike that's the one to go for. But what about a gravel bike then? Well well, the first thing is obvious you want to ride on mixed surfaces maybe sometimes on tarmac sometimes on gravel, sometimes on bridleways. I think the first thing to point out is that the word gravel is pretty misleading. Is it something that's come from the, the States where the marketing of these bikes appears to have originated, where they seem to have miles and miles and miles of gravel? I think a more appropriate name for someone who's not familiar with the origins of that term is mixed surface uh, bike. What you get with a gravel bike or mixed surface bike then is a sort of greater sense of adventure, a greater sense of freedom. You're able to, you know, go off the tarmac if you want to and then it's perfectly capable on uh, sort of gentle off-road. I mean they're not designed for serious, gnarly, single track, crazy off-road stuff that you'd get at like Whistler Black Comb on a black run, but you get what I mean. It's it's a very versatile machine. Also great for bike packing, and you can load them up uh, with bike packing bags and go off exploring and camping and all that's really appealing. But it should be pointed out that you can put bike packing bags 
on a regular road bike. A lot of modern bikes are designed for this. You don't need sort of pannier rack holes, although a lot of gravel bikes do have racking hole options, so you can store stuff in kind of better ways. But a lot of modern bike packing bags are designed to fit on any bike, which is really cool. The only issue is that on a dedicated road bike, you're gonna have much less tire clearance, which means you can't get those big high volume tires in there that'll allow you to go on sort of off-road trails and things. So gravel bikes, they're really versatile. You can ride them on the road, but being, I mean, generally speaking, they're normally a little bit heavier than a road bike, a little bit less aerodynamic, although some aerodynamic models do exist, like the 3T Exploro, j Powers had a look at, and also the uh, Hurt Rondo, or the Rondo Hurt that uh, myself and Hank rode in Poland last year. They're kind of like aero mixed surface bikes, which is cool, but, still with the wider tires on there and just generally the frame and there's a bit more weight to the frame what if, if you're not bothered about being two kilometers an hour slower on your on your rides or when you're riding on tarmac then which you know some people aren't bothered about at all then you know gravel bike offers way more versatility than a road bike plus i mean even if you are going that little bit slower on the road because of mainly because of the rolling resistance of the tires you're still getting the same workout. And I actually know quite a few people who they actually choose to ride a cyclocross bike or a gravel bike because their riding companions that they'll ride with, uh, the fitness level is a bit different between them. So being on a slightly slower bike with bigger, fatter off-road tires on kind of evens it out so that they can make their riding more sociable together. I think if you're not bothered about racing or getting that Strava PB every time you jump on your bike, then, you know, a gravel bike is, is a really good way to go. There is gravel racing as an emerging sort of fledgling discipline happening. Um, so there is that as well. But the other thing to point out is that, well, with the wider tire volume, gravel bikes, are gonna be more comfortable in pretty much every surface than a road bike, which is something else to consider. But I'm really interested to hear what you think about this Manon. And if you were buying a bike tomorrow, what would you go for? So I've never actually owned a gravel bike or ever tried gravel riding, but I would love to. It sounds like such a new and exciting discipline and you could go on some proper adventures on a gravel bike, I think. After thinking about the pros and cons of a road bike and a gravel bike, I've come to the conclusion that I would actually pick a gravel bike. They sound very versatile, so if you wanted to choose a gravel ride, you can go out and do a gravel ride. And then if you fancied a road ride, you could just change your tyres, as you said, Ollie, or you could probably get away with leaving the gravel tyres on. Whereas if you picked a road bike, you couldn't really do that. I feel like a road bike on gravel, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as good where as um, on the road you could happily use a gravel bike. So yeah, I'm gonna pick a gravel bike. What about you, Ollie? As for me, I'm you know very lucky to have a couple of beautiful road bikes uh, right now. So if I was getting another bike, then uh, as an N plus one, then yeah, a gravel bike would be what, what I'd want to get. But if I could only have one bike in the world, then I'd still want a dedicated road bike because that's what I still enjoy the most is, is riding as fast as I can go on tarmac and you know my my sort of ego is is still such that I, I want to still try and be faster than I've been in the past and at the moment my body isn't slowing down I think maybe as I get a bit older um, I might become a little less preoccupied with trying to be as fast as I can be and just go out and enjoy it more of the time and just be a bit more relaxed and and uh, you know, be a bit more about having an adventure, at which point then I think the, the, the pendulum will swing towards me favoring a gravel bike as my number one. And in terms of a bike that's just for, you know, exploring and having adventures, I think a gravel bike is the way to go. I also think because there is less emphasis on racing with a, with a gravel bike, that whereas, you know, something like my amazing Pinarello, it's, it's a very racy machine. It's all folks about being as fast as, and as fit as you can be. And I think that whole thing can be a bit intimidating for beginner cyclists. I think something like a gravel bike where the emphasis is more about freedom and fun is a, is a lot less of an intimidating proposition to someone who's new to the sport. And I think that is brilliant. And when I've had the opportunity to ride on gravel like in Alta Badir and 
Iceland. It's been absolutely amazing and I've had some of the best cycling memories I've ever had. But as ever, we want to know what you guys think. So get involved in the comments down below because I'm, the more I think about this, I, I think it gets quite intriguing because I think there's a potential that gravel bikes could overtake the sales of normal road bikes. Um, so do you think that, that that will happen? You know, will gravel bikes become more popular than road bikes? And then dedicated racing road bike machines like this will become a kind of more of a niche sector within, within cycling. It's uh, an interesting thing to, to think about. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Time now for hot tech. Now, custom integrated aero bars are something that's normally reserved for only the world's best time trialists. And this is, you know, for a couple of reasons. They are prohibitively expensive for many of us. And that's largely down to the manufacturing of them is, well, one-offs um, and takes a lot of time. And they're made to completely custom fit the end user and the person that's going to be using them so that they can integrate into the forearm and make that whole front end of you more aerodynamic. Well, company Watchshop is looking to change that and make integrated aero bars more readily available to a wider range of riders and triathletes. So this is the company's new Anamoy uh, aero extensions, or is it Anamoy? I'm not sure if it's meant to be French pronunciation or not. But the clever thing about them is that they have a modular design is the way I'd describe it. So different parts can be interchanged in order to customize the fit so that it you know suits a really wide range of people and their different sort of cockpit setups. So you can change the width of the bars, the length of the bars, uh, the hand position, the angle of the bars, all by changing various spacers, base plates, and different sort of modular components within the bar design itself. There's different angle adjustment as well by way of different spaces. So you can have five, 10, 15, 20 or 25 degree adjustment. Get that nice high hands position if that's what you're after. Uh, a nice integrated computer mount on them. DI2 um, integration is in there as well. And they're still expensive at 1500 pounds or just under 1500 pounds a pair. But owing to the sort of batch production process that they've managed to uh, work in, which, you know, it, it makes scale up easier, uh, that that price is significantly less, like way less than the one off bars that we've seen in the past from the likes of Speed Bar. Some more cool new stuff from Physique. Now, I'll tell you what, Physique has been busy in lockdown. They launched some really nice things last week. Well, they've just brought out their Classics range, which is uh, designed to honor and celebrate the tears and triumphs of the monuments of cycling. So, races like Paruru Bay. So the range includes the Argo short nose saddle, the uh, Tempo Bond Cush tacky bar tape, and my personal favorite, the Tempo R4 overcurve shoes, uh, which look very smart. Now, all the products in this range have a distinctive sort of pattern on them, which is this kind of metallic mud splatter effect on there, which is pretty unique. I've not seen that on many cycling things before. Um, pretty original, but it's it's cool because it's it's kind of representative of the mud splatter that you typically get on riders' equipment and bikes and clothing and stuff at the end of a race like Paris-Roubaix. And I think, yeah, that's cool, that. I like that. Next up, we've got a new bike computer. Hammerhead has announced that it's going to be launching the Karoo 2, which is a follow-up to the Karoo. In case you missed it, we did a first look video on the original Karoo last year. And if you're not familiar, it's a bike computer that had the USPs of which are that it's got a big emphasis on navigation. So it's got a much more capable uh, and bigger like multi-touch screen on it uh, than other computers on the market. And it also has a big emphasis on sort of navigation software built into the unit as well. So we reached out to Hammerhead, see if we'd get some details, and they sent us these images, which is pretty exciting. Hammerhead is remaining quite tight-lipped about the new Karoo 2, uh, as it's not been released yet, but they did share some details with us. 
So first up, it's said to be 40% smaller than the original one, which for anyone that's familiar with the original one is pretty interesting because that was quite a big unit, so it's, so it's got quite a bit smaller. Uh, also said to be 33% lighter, having uh, been decreased in size, but the quality of the screen is said to have been improved. They reckon it's got 28% higher pixel density than the uh, previous one. I mean, the screen was impressive on the previous one, so that'll be uh, really interesting to see. Overall, it appears to be a smaller, lighter version of the previous unit that still you know, packs in all, all the features that made the first one popular, but with some additional features as well. Uh, they say that there are some exciting hardware things that they're going to reveal that it can do that they haven't revealed yet, but it does have um, radar alerts on it, which sounds pretty cool. I, I guess that's for sort of traffic and things as you're riding along. Um, it can do Strava Live segments and has beeper navigation added to it as well. I'm really excited about this year. I can't wait to see you know, what it's like when it's fully properly released and hear about all the things it can do because Hammerhead has described it as a generational leap in head units. And well, the, the quote they have on their site at the moment is, the Karoo 2 will be the ultimate high performance head unit fit for champions. We're creating a device fully designed to perform at the highest levels of the sport for both hardware and software. Um, so well, I guess watch this space. I mean, I'm always welcome uh, competition in this sector because I feel it helps all the other head unit brands you know, not rest on their laurels and constantly strive to up their game and improve products, which benefits all of us. The legendary Sir Bradley Wiggins and performance clothing brand Lacol combine again for Lacol by Wiggins Spring Summer 20 range. The updated Lacol by Wiggins Spring Summer range is now available featuring the all new pro and sports jerseys designed by the Olympic and Tour de France champion. Sticking with the classic look that definitely stands out, this is how Sir Bradley Wiggins thinks a cycling kit should look. Thanks Manon, more hot tech next week. Uh, but before we end this segment and move into upgrades, a quick bit of housekeeping. You may remember at the start of the year, we launched our search for the next GCN Tech presenter. Fortunately, we had to put this on hold because of the global pandemic, but we are now resuming our search. So if you haven't heard from us, it isn't necessarily bad news. Uh, just stay tuned as we will be hiring a new presenter, hopefully soon. Now time to screw around upgrades by upgrades, where you send in upgrades that you've made to your cycling lives or bicycles for a chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN cap. But before we get on to this week, let's take a look at last week's results. If you remember, we had Tom's Tomo Styles a single speed conversion and Timmy Two Bikes revamped Falcon. And the winner is, with 60% was Timmy Two Bikes revamped Falcon. Well done, Timmy Two Bikes. Send us your details on Facebook and we'll send the cap right out to you. So moving on to this week, I have chosen two really good upgrades and they're both quite similar. So I'm really interested to see what one comes out on top. First up, we have this one in from Mika Francis. Strip my old 2009 Giant TCR down to the bare frame. Started with a metallic silver, laid decals, and then a candy blue went on. Upgraded from old 10 speed Shimano to 105 11 speed. Finishing touches were the supercars, bar tape, bottle cages, and Conti Supersport tyres. So, I really like the metallic silver that went on underneath. I think that's very nice colour. Does look very nice. Um, Candy blue is very nice as well. A little bit sparkly on the top tube there. And then the bar tape. That is a very nice finishing touch. This bike is also bike fault worthy. It's what we like to see. Very good upgrade. Impressed. Quite like the different blue on the bottle cages as well. I feel that goes quite nicely. But who is Mika Francis up against? And it's up against Max Shady's. He had an old BMC and decided to make it into a little summer project. Had a relatively limited budget and the bike had sentimental value so he didn't want to just buy a new one. Brand new complete Tiago group set, tyre saddle, pedals, bar tapes, bottle cages and a homemade one of a kind paint job later and it feels like a brand new bike. So Max Shady's actually gone from the silver metallic to quite a nice red metallic. Very good paint job on both bikes, big fan. 
even tan sidewalls on this. And this is, I'd say this is bike fault worthy, apart from the rock. I hope that the rock didn't scrape the paint off. That would be quite upsetting, but you see what I mean when I said they're quite similar? So I think it's gonna be a really tough one this week to decide who takes a win, but it's not up to me, it's up to you guys. Head over to the GCN app and get voted. Who's gonna win GCN camp? It's now time for the bike vault where you submit pictures of your bikes and we vote if they're nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, the bike vault bell gets rung. That's a very special moment. and Everybody wants to get a super nice in the bike fault, but it's not that easy. There's a few rules you have to follow. So first up this week, we've got Double Lab 88 with a Trek Domain SL5. And this was taken in Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. Oh, I'm very, very big fan of this color. A nice metallic-y purple, a little bit sparkly. We are following the bike fault rules. We have got some bottles on. At first glance, I was gonna say this was gonna be a super nice, but I'm something in my gut saying it's not. I think it's just the background. The background is not doing it for me. This, a good background, nice clean background would, this would be a super nice. I know it's not all about the background, but this is what the bike fault's all about. So combination of things. So that is just a nice for me today. Next one in from Shane with a GT grade from 2017. Mm, mm. Like, I think we're looking at this from the wrong an angle. I think it needs to be straight on at the bike and we can see everything. Plus we're not, we're not in, the crank isn't in the right position and the valves aren't lined up. No, the valves aren't lined up. We've got the light on, we've got the saddlebag on, we've got the bottle. Yeah, see, I told you, it's just a combination of things that make a super nice, and all the combination of things have to be right to get a super nice. And you know, we've got some things right here, but other things aren't. So again, it's just a nice for me today. I feel like I'm being really harsh today, but it is the bike vault. Next one is sent in from Joel from South Africa. And this is a Factor 02 Bam. That is stunning. Now we're talking, we're getting somewhere. This background, I mean, it looks so nice, it could be photoshopped. But, I mean, the bike is pretty bike fault worthy. We're in biggie smalls, the valves, no bottles, no, no saddlebags, no lights. I, pff, gut instinct is a super nice and I'm gonna go with that. First super nice of the bike fault this week. Next bike is in from Bike Faults. Someone has called themselves Bike Faults. Maybe they're just so dedicated to the Bike Fault and this is, this is just them. Well, this bike is a Battergling Chrono and I actually featured one of these bikes in the six most beautiful bikes that went out on the weekend and they are very nice bikes. It wasn't exactly the same as this one, but it was the same color and this color is absolutely beautiful and a lot of work actually goes into getting this color. It's not that easy, but it's definitely worth it. This is a very nice looking bike. Even got a disc on there for aero canes and an aero bottle, all about the aero gains. But yeah, absolutely stunning bike and following the bike vault rules, valves are lined up, biggie smalls, crank it, three o'clock. No chimney either. Always look out for the chimney. Definitely a super nice. Last bike in the bike vault this week is in from P17 Curl and it's a Merido Reacto. Now, at first glance, I think this is definitely 100% a triathlete's bike. I'm gonna tell you why. Things that give it away. The clip-on bars onto the handlebars. The Bottle cages at the back, in this case there's probably spares in there I think. The aero bottle cage and the biggest thing of them all, probably the Ironman sticker I'd say. But that's okay, we can accept triathletes bikes into the bike vault, if they're bike vault worthy that is. In this case, I'm not sure. I don't, don't think we can put this in the bike vault, I'm sorry. 
It's just we're not in biggie smalls, we're in little smalls, which is it's not how we, we do it at the bike fault. And the crank isn't in line, the valves, yeah. That's it for the Bike Vault this week. Remember to upload your pictures to the Bike Vault section in the GCN app for a chance to be on the Bike Vault next week. Unfortunately, it's the end of the show. Sorry about that. But if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to support the channel, then consider subscribing if you haven't already, as it really does help. Uh, also, you can head over to the shop.global cycling network and get your hands on some rather nice stash, if that's your bag. And if you'd like to watch some more videos, well, We've got loads. Also, some exciting stuff coming up on the channel this week. Uh, all the trade shows have been cancelled this year because of the global pandemic. Yeah, and I'm sick of hearing about it as well. But in the wake of that, Jeremy Powers is having his own gravel trade show in his backyard. I think he means garden um, at the weekend. So tune in for that. It should be good. Some hot new gravel tech. I'll see you next time. Argo. Got it wrong. Some more cool new stuff from Physique. They've been busy over at Physique because, right, Bleal, there's a fly distracting me over there. It's now time for screw Ryan upgrades by upgrades, where you submit pictures. It's now time for screw Ryan upgrades by upgrades, where you send in evidence. Okay, we're not in Biggie Smalls. We're in little big. No, we're in little. We're in, we're, we're not in biggie smalls, we're in big, biggie littles. Little big. Got some cracking ones coming up this week. First up, we've got, oh. and the next one in the back of oh. On that note, that's the end of the bike fault for this week. But remember, you can. Oh, shit. That's it for the bike fault this week. Remember to submit. Remember. So that's it for the bike fault this week. Remember to. That's it for the bike fault this week. Remember to submit. Submit.